Are you serious? Are you seriously serious? What? Oh, yes, I know it's early on the East Coast. What is it, around 1037 a.m.? But I have to come on early tonight because I have an appointment tonight that I uh, cannot uh, miss. So uh, we're going live right now. So somebody put a tweet out. Somebody text one of the mods. Heidi, if you could text all the mods, maybe one of them are awake out there, and they can help us out as we are live uh, uh, on the coming apocalypse. This is today's supposed to be the 12 noon edition, but we're coming on early, and I can see True Seeker is already in the house. So is room three. So shalom, shalom to you. We're, we're live in Jerusalem, and yes, we are on our way home. We're going to be leaving, actually, on Friday. And we will be returning on Friday because we're going to gain some time going back east. And um, so we will be arriving back home tomorrow. Which means I will be back in the Salvation Station studios and we'll be getting you some updates where we're at on everything. Uh, and certainly Sunday Night Live will be live from the Salvation Station. Now, let me just tell you, it is great to be here with all of you we've had an unbelievable i just got done interviewing avi lipkin first of all i want to thank Irvin baxter uh dr Irvin baxter and his uh end of the age ministries Irvin baxter ministries he let us ha have use of his jerusalem office here in jerusalem and uh, he has a beautiful offices and studio and he let us have access to it, gave us, and his staff was just wonderful, and they helped us, and we went up, we went in there, and we interviewed two television shows that'll be coming up with Avi Lipkin, and two television shows that'll be coming up with Samatov, and they are powerful. Both of these are powerful interviews. You'll be seeing them on television and on YouTube. Also, Yesterday, I interviewed Rabbi Yehuda Glick in his office at the Knesset, in his office. That will be also two more television shows, the interview with Rabbi Yehuda Glick from the Knesset. Uh, so look forward to seeing that. Also, I interviewed Roddy Brown this week. Roddy Brown, and there will be a, at least one television show from my interviews with him and that was on location. I interviewed him in the Kidron Valley. And I'm going to bring you some never-before-seen footage, which is going to blow your mind in that interview. Okay? Where we actually go inside uh, tombs, go inside cave tombs, where seven people were uh, buried, and uh, never-before-seen footage. And that's going to be coming to you uh, on a television interview with Roddy Brown. That's from the Kidron Valley. And also, um, we have the Knesset. Uh, I was so blessed to get to speak at the Knesset. Sister Heidi took about five minutes of that and put it on YouTube for you. You can check that out. It, uh, the people, it's overwhelming response of people with the love. Uh, you know, we just wanted to show love to the, to the people here of Israel we were invited to be in a Bible study at the Knesset. That is like being at a Bible study in the Congress here in the United States. It's their Congress, the Knesset, in which Jews and Christians share the Word of God and share from the Bible, a Bible study in the Knesset. Are you serious? Are you serious? So it was a very historical moment, and we were blessed and honored to be a part of that. You'll be able to see that. That will also be... Uh, there's a little YouTube video of that. Please check that out. Heidi put that up on YouTube this morning. And uh, just amazing, amazing there. Um, but anyway, I can't even think of everything we've done. I mean, uh, interviews. Uh, I, I, did a, I did one television show from the Mount of Olives. I did one television show from the, the Field of Blood where Judas Iscariot uh, hung himself in the and bought the field of blood with the thirty pieces of silver. I did one television show in the in the valley of Haman, the valley of Haman, um, which is the valley of the slaughter, Hinnom. where, uh, huh? Hinnom. Hinnom, excuse me. The 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 valley of Hinnom, the valley of Hinnom, that is the valley of the slaughter, 
where thousands of Jewish children were sacrificed to Molech and the blood cries out. I went right into that valley, right where that took place, and we did a television show there. Um, I'm forgetting. I can't remember everywhere. Okay, so anyway, these are going to be powerful shows. You'll be able to see them on television and YouTube, okay, as those will air. It's just been incredible. But got one more meeting tonight. So anyway, we're, we're live, and I want to get right into this because Hawaii is in trouble. Uh, actually, we just booked Code Searcher. or Did we book him, or you're trying to? I'm trying. She's trying to. He's, we, he's sleeping. He's sleeping, so we, we should have him as a guest Monday night. I'll be back home in the Salvation Station in Indiana, and we'll probably have him. We've asked for him to be our guest this coming Monday night from Hawaii because this thing's not over, guys. Matter of fact, I, the largest freshwater lake in all of the Big Island there in Hawaii, the largest lake there just got swallowed. The hot lava just swallowed it. It's gone. The largest freshwater lake. You have to understand. The it's not. I mean, look. And Code Searcher is very upset because the media is saying maybe three hundred homes have been destroyed. He's saying it's way more than that. It's hundreds of homes because they're not really counting a lot of these homes that are not. You know, maybe they're not. Uh, you know, they're small or or they could be. You know, uh, more like. Uh, you know, not as not big homes, okay? Just little dwelling places where people live here and there, and they get they're getting destroyed, and the the media just don't even count it, just don't even count it, okay? Which is insanity. So let me go right now to Hawaii before I get any further. Uh, right now to this report, but according to reports, the steam has billowed up from the Hawaii's largest freshwater lake as lava flow has just evaporated its, its waters. Within a few hours, the largest lake on the Big Island, Freshwater Lake, is gone. A steam of plume first appeared at around 10 o'clock in the morning as lava poured into Green Lake in Kapo, Kapoho. By 3 p.m., the Hawaii County Fire Department says that the uh, when they did an overflight confirmed that the United States, the U.S. Geological Survey says the lake had been filled with lava and the body of water is no more. It's gone. The lake is gone. Completely evaporated and overtaken by the hot flowing lava. It's unbelievable. Green Lake is gone. This was a very popular swimming spot. It, would, you could, it had depths of 200 feet. Uh, I can't believe it, says the Hawaii Community College geography instructor Drew Cap. He told TV stations, he said, I've never seen or heard anything like this happen before. It's been more than a month since the lava began flowing from off the mountain as the volcano erupted back on May 3rd. The destructive path that has been caused now has taken 7.7 square miles. You heard me right, 7.7 square miles of the Big Island completely covered in lava. Residents also have had to contend with poisonous gases given off by the lava, which can include lays, which is a hydrochloric acid and volcanic glass particles. Now, Green Lake isn't the only part of the Big Lake that the recent volcanic activity has transformed. Kapoho Bay, famous for its tide pools, was completely filled by lava on Tuesday. So that took place already. So something biblical is going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And, and I'm telling you, folks, we are living in the, uh, uh, the era of the end of the age. This is the, uh, uh, the apocalyptic hour. This, we're on the brink of the beast. We're on the edge of eternity. Something biblical is going on, folks, with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And I'm afraid people are not ready. There is no question about it. Prophecy is fulfilling itself right before our very eyes. And I can tell you, I just got an interview in Avi Lipkin. Uh, and, and I just got an interviewing Samatov. 
and both of these guys brought forth some brought brought out some incredible prophetic information. Some of it breaking news, and some of it very prophetic. Uh, and all of this is happening so fast. There's no way to keep up with it. The beast is about to rise, and so I think it's important. The birthing pains of the end of the age. Uh, we're living in this this hour, this apocalyptic hour. Matter of fact, I think Hawaii is the epicenter of the apocalypse. It's right in the center of the Ring of Fire. It's connected to Yellowstone. It's the magma's moving, the lava's flowing, the smoke and the ash and the gases and and, and the poisonous lays and the haze and the vlog, and the smog, and all of it is just everywhere, and I think we've got to get people's attention right now, just what time it is. It's a minute to midnight. Are you serious? It's a minute to midnight, and we got to understand uh, the time that we're living in. Let me tell you about the earthquakes real quick here. Guys, hang with me. 100, Heidi, and 56 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. <laughs> I have to just stop and take a drink of water on that one. 156? Are you serious? Well, I'm not going to read 156 earthquakes to you. I can just tell you this. Hawaii is going completely off the chain. But there's other places where there's some strong quakes that are now taking place. Just know this. Hawaii itself has way over 100 earthquakes that are 2.5 or higher. 156 earthquakes all over the globe that are at least 2.5 or higher. And we, we know that if over 100 of them are Hawaii. But where else is there quakes? Well, 4.3 East Timor, okay? There was even a 3.0 in Nevada. Uh, 4.5 earthquake hit India. 4.8, the Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There was also a another India earthquake, 5.1, very shallow in India. Are you serious? But wait, there's more. Two, um, there was a 2.5 in California. There was a 5.6, a very strong quake in the South Sandwich Islands. There was a 2.7 in Armenia. I've never even heard of an earthquake in Armenia. 2.7. Um, and I've been studying earthquakes now every day for the last eight years. First time I've seen that one. That are at least 2.5 or higher. So many in Hawaii that we can't even get through the chart. It's so many. One after another. It's the epicenter of the apocalypse. Oh, here's one. 5.1 in the southern east. Pacific rise, uh, very shallow, only 10 kilometers. There was a 4.7 in Nicaragua, okay? Nicaragua had a 4.7. Also, 3.0, 3.8, 2.5, all in Alaska. 4.1 New Zealand. Again, tons of them in Hawaii just kept shaking and quaking. I mean, it's it, it just unreal. 2.6 in Mammoth Lakes, California. Again, gazillion earthquake. There was a very strong one, though, not long ago. 5.4 hit the volcano in Hawaii not long ago. So we're going to have to watch and see what developed from that because the last time we had a 5.5, we saw what happened. The lava just went flowing out and destroyed 200 homes. What did this one just do? Okay, I'm going to do some checking here in a moment. Uh, we had a 2.5 Dominican Republic. We had another 4.4 in India, 2.6 in Oklahoma, 4.2 in Chile, 4.2 in Japan, 5.1 in the Tristan da Cunha uh, region. You might say, where is that? That's somewhere between South America and Africa, right in the middle down in the southern portion. Also, there was a 2.6 Oklahoma, 4.2. Two Chile, 4.9 Papua New Guinea, 5.0 Papua New Guinea. So, how much damage did this 5.4 earthquake cause? Well, it was three hours ago, four hours ago, five hours ago, seven hours ago, 
eight hours ago. How long ago was this that this hit? Nine, uh, nine hours ago. Okay, it looks like it was about 10 or 11 hours ago. So we're going to keep a close eye to find out what the damage from that. What, it, it, did it open up more fissures? Uh, did, did it just cause the lava to go completely crazy and, and flow like mad? Uh, we just don't know yet, and so we're going to be keeping a very close eye on that. Now, while this is going on, guys, uh, there's been no notification. People didn't even know I'm on. It's just amazing how I'm, I'm so frustrated that the algorithms are literally set up to oppress my channel as well as many other alternative media channels, and yet, you know, we're pushing close to a quarter of a million sub subscribers. Can you imagine if we got a fair shake what it would be? It's just unbelievable. It's because they can't handle the truth. They can't handle the truth. This is the bottom line. I mean, <laughs> but thank you guys for sharing. Okay, the, the solar winds are blowing at 400 kilometers per second right now that has been slowly going down over the last few days. There's going to be a daytime meteor shower today, one of the most active meteor showers of the year. It's going to peak today, but you won't be able to see it because it's going to happen during the daytime. All right? They expect about 60 meteorites to break through the Earth's atmosphere uh, in the next uh, 24 hours. We'll keep a close eye on that. I can tell you already that uh, there's only been nine of them in the last 24 hours, but that's getting ready to change in a big way. As far as asteroids are concerned, nothing to worry about. There is no asteroids at all uh, approaching the Earth. But that could change because sometimes they come out of nowhere like, like last week and one hit the Earth. It literally hit the Earth. We didn't even, it wasn't even on our charts. And within three hours, it crashed into the Earth. Uh, it was very small. It was only six meters, and it hit in a remote area, so everybody's okay, but it could have been catastrophic, guys. It could have been very, very catastrophic. So keep a close eye on the space weather. That's what's going on. Um, it's amazing to me how these things just keep happening. Uh, but speaking of things happening, we got to talk about Columbus, um, Nebraska. There's a, they've had a severe storm. And the power is out in the whole town. It's in uh, Columbus, Nebraska. I'm going to go right now and get a quick update on this. So hang on just a second. And we'll get you this, what happened in Columbus, Nebraska here. But um, <clears throat> unreal. Storm. Knocking out all the power. If we can find it, you would think it would be right here on the right here on the top of the news. Here, here's what we have: uh, a storm battered Columbus, Nebraska. The power's been knocked out, and uh, it's pretty pretty wild storm. This storm battered Columbus, Nebraska yesterday, knocking over trees, taking out power lines. Uh, according to Loop Power CEO Neil Seuss, says the substantial saw outages from the storm taking out power uh, in Columbus and in Richland, Nebraska. One of the many trees that were knocked over during the storm completely blocked the 8th Street near 16th Avenue in Columbus, Nebraska. There was a bunch of other trees that also have reported to have fallen along with a lot of power lines. Also, a hailstorm for a short period of time came falling down in Columbus, Nebraska, as the storm moved from the northeast to the southwest of the city. It, it affected Butler, Polk, Merrick, and Nance counties. There's been a flood advisory now issued for parts of Platte and Koufax counties. And uh, the following rainfall initial report says that the winds gusted up to 60 miles an hour. So kind of crazy right there in the middle of Nebraska, but it's a pretty powerful storm, powerful impact uh, as it was felt and people lost power. We've got, uh, we've got a, some of our own online church 
members here of this amazing online church who actually were affected by this. And so our prayers are going out to them because uh, it's it's not good. Oh, by the way, Houston, we've got a problem. Houston, we've got a problem. That's right. It, and Hobby Airport, Houston, Texas this morning, there was an un... Uh, there was a a package, or was it luggage, Heidi? Uh, it was luggage. It's a very suspicious situation. No, it was a toy grenade. But it was a toy grenade. But they didn't know it was a toy grenade. They thought it was an actual grenade. So the entire airport was evacuated. That's in Houston, Texas, at Hobby Airport in Houston. But when they, uh, the bomb squad and the, and, the, and the units got in there, they found out it was a fake toy grenade and everything's going to be okay but everybody's on edge everyone's on edge now i'm here in jerusalem and tomorrow is uh not the last day of ramadan but it is the last friday i believe of ramadan if not very close anyway they have declared tomorrow night uh a special protest during Ramadan prayers, and they're anticipating 350,000. I want you to listen to this number again because this is insane. 350,000 Palestinians are coming to the Temple Mount, to coming to Jerusalem. They'll never get them all up on the Temple Mount, but it will be insane. They'll get a lot of them up there, and they're, they're converging on the Temple Mount and on the city of Jerusalem tomorrow. And uh, they're pro going to be protesting against the U.S. Embassy and against President Donald Trump in particular for moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and for President Trump declaring Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So uh, this is going to be huge. Uh, this is going to be huge. Now, I'm leaving, okay? I'm leaving uh, and will be gone uh, before this event takes place. Now, I was here last Friday when about 100, I think they estimate 122,000 uh, folks, Palestinians, came in for worship. It was very peaceful. There was no problems. Uh, it is Ramadan right now. But tomorrow's big. As a matter of fact, even uh, one of the men I was talking to on the street was telling me this is going to be huge. This is a record. This is the most ever to come to Jerusalem for a Ramadan uh, Friday prayers. We're talking 350,000 people. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray everything goes down peaceably. But they say they are going to be protesting as a part of this in the streets of Jerusalem uh, tomorrow. So we're going to keep a close eye on it. I want you to watch closely and pray for everyone involved here, all right? Now, speaking of things to pray about, please be praying also uh, as President Trump today is going to be meeting with Japanese President Abe, uh, Shinzo Abe, is going to be meeting with President Donald Trump today. Now, it's all, all of these meetings now are getting very critical. They have to do with North Korea. They have to do with how that's going to shake out. And, uh, you, you know, you got the South Koreans, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Philippines, the J Japanese, the Americans, everybody, Russia, everybody that's in that area are all uh, a little bit on edge. But hopefully this thing is going to work out. Uh, as President Trump, the summit is coming. I mean, today is already June, I think, the 7th. And, uh, I mean, everything's coming together now fast, okay? Uh, we're only five days away from the North Korean summit in Singapore uh, between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Five days away. I know we're going to be covering it extensively. I'll be back home in Indiana, and we will be covering it extensively, live coverage of it. We're going to keep a very close eye on it as it's taking place uh, next week. So everybody just stay prayed up in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Someone said, will they protest or riot? I really don't have a clue which one they will do, to be honest with you. But I know that a gentleman I talked to on the street this morning who is Muslim 
told me that uh, this is a big, big deal. This is the most they've ever had come to Jerusalem for Ramadan. This is the largest crowd ever. And he said they are coming 350,000. And uh, <clears throat> the news says it is going to be a protest toward President Trump and the fact that he moved the U.S. Embassy. Now, we were at the U.S. Embassy, Sister Heidi and I. We were at the Embassy two days ago. We actually did a YouTube video from a distance there. You can see the embassy behind us. We were pretty close. And then we went right to the embassy. I actually got some pictures right there at the embassy, uh, the U.S. Embassy here in Jerusalem. So anyway, that's what they're going to be protesting. It's pretty, pretty tense on that. Let's pray that it's a protest and not a riot. It's a, it, I need some prayer warriors. We really need some prayer warriors. We really, really do want to see it be peaceful. So pray about this and I think uh, we really do need to intercede on uh, on behalf of everyone there. Oh by the way, Benjamin Netanyahu has just proclaimed the Iranian nuke deal is dead. Matter of fact, this was just minutes ago. Uh, let me see if I can find that article. I had it, I thought, right here in front of me, but now I don't see it. Where did it go? Uh, all right, let me I'll come back to that in a second. Let me tell you about President Donald Trump just tweeted he just tweeted about 30 minutes ago. He said, our Justice Department must not let Awan and Debbie Wasserman Schultz off the hook. You may, may remember that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was sending funds to this Pakistani um, IT guy who worked for the Democratic Party. His name is Awan. That's A-W-A-N. And Debbie Wasserman Schultz was the, she was the head of the Democratic National Committee. She got thrown out when they found out she was involved with um, all kinds of stuff, uh, really railroading Bernie Sanders and, and making sure Hillary Clinton got the nomination uh, for the Democratic Party. Well, also her emails, some of her emails were tied in with Hillary's emails. As a matter of fact, some of her emails end up leaking over on WikiLeaks, and that's what got her fired. Now we're finding out that over $120,000 were sent by Debbie Wasserman Schultz to this Pakistani uh, lobbyist named Awan, the IT guy. And now here's what's taking place the Justice Department must not let Awan and Debbie Wasserman Schultz off the hook. The Democratic IT scandal is a key to much of the corruption we see today. They want to make a plea deal to hide what is on their server. But where is the server? This is really bad. That's the uh, tweet by President Donald J. Trump. Are you serious? So what have they got to hide? Why are they trying to hide it? Uh, the corruption just continues in the swamp. Trump trying to deal with it, and uh, it's just uh, every day there's another uh, scandal with the liberal left and, and the uh, Democratic Party and the head of the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation and the Uranium One and the, uh, the, uh, the Uranium One deal to Russia and Russia's $145 million kickback to the Clinton Foundation. And, and what about Benghazi and, and what happened there? And what about Fast and Furious and, and Eric Holder? And what about Loretta Lynch and President Clinton on the tarmac? And it, it just what about Hillary Clinton's server and all of those uh, classified emails that were on her server that were on? And, and uh, former Congressman Anthony Weiner, who just got sentenced to prison for 21 months, and his wife, Uma Abedin, who was the daughter of the Muslim uh, Sisterhood and tied in with the Clinton. I mean, this just did the skin. And then here comes Mueller and the Russian fake dossier. And it's Debbie Wasserman Schultz that paid $6 million for that, along with the um, uh, Hillary Clinton campaign for a fake dossier that the FBI was able to get a Pfizer, uh, a Pfizer warrant to go after Trump. And then we find out President, President Barack Obama uh, had wiretapped, he did, he wiretapped the Trump campaign offices, the Trump Tower, the Trump home, 
Trump family homes, the Trump sons' homes, and the Trump, are you serious, uh, campaign offices, and and so it just goes on. I can't even keep up. Nobody can keep up with this. There's so much corruption here. It's unreal. Are you serious? Are you serious? Anyway, Netanyahu says the Iran deal is dead. He just said this. Uh, let me get you the info on this. Right now, it's breaking news. One hour ago, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told BBC the Iranian nuke uh, newspaper agency. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the Iranian nuke deal is effectively over. It's dead despite continuing support by Britain and other European allies. Netanyahu, who held talks with British Prime Minister Theresa May in Downing Street yesterday in the UK, said that the threat of U.S. sanctions on companies which continued to trade with Iran had been decisive. Speaking to a policy exchange think tank in London yesterday, uh, no, today, the weight of the American economy forces the issue, he said. If you are a European company or an Asian company or any company and you have to choose whether to do business with Iran or forego doing business with the United States, you have to choose an economy that's about 3% of the size of the American economy or you can forego the economy with $21 trillion GDP and that's no brainer. You can side with the Iranians or with the Americans, but that's not a there's no brainer here. If are you serious? His comments came despite Theresa May's assertion that the United Kingdom, together with France and Germany, remain committed to the Iranian nuke deal, even though President Donald Trump has announced the United States is pulling out and the deal is dead. Netanyahu, who also met French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel earlier in the week, said, however, that in practice, the Europeans have accepted the economic realities. In other words, they know, they know they can't do this. And companies are pulling out of Iran. And it's a good thing they're pulling out of Iran because if we have learned anything, it is stop aggressive, tyrannical regimes early. Don't accommodate them. For God's sake, don't feed them with cash. That's, he's really saying that's what Obama did. Stop them. That's what I think is happening right now, he said. So I didn't spend much time on that because I think it's done, said uh, Netanyahu. It's a done deal. My impression is everybody understands the economic realities. The Iranian nuke deal is dead. Netanyahu has long argued about this deal, originally signed back in 2015 when Barack Obama, then U.S. president, was ineffective in constraining Iran's ambitions to become a nuclear weapons power. They made this big deal and Iran just kept on marching with their nuclear ambitions. He again defended the shooting by Israeli forces of more than 100 Palestinians during the protests at the border fence in Gaza, despite Theresa May's voicing concern at the scale of the casualties, Netanyahu said those involved were vicious terrorists who had been used by Hamas to attack Israel. They are organizing a violent assault into Israel with a view of to destroy us, which they openly proclaim in order to break the border fence and kidnap and murder Israeli citizens. So Netanyahu is standing very strong as expected and um, the situation continues exactly where we thought it would end up, right where we're at. When, when Trump tore up the agreement and said it's over, it's dead, we're, and then they made the announcement about two weeks ago that they were putting the most strenuous, the most hardest, the most uh, unbelievable sanctions upon Iran ever in history, it would cripple any country that wants to think they're going to do significant business with the Iranians. Uh, you really don't want to do that because uh, you will really get shut down by the United States. So basically what we're seeing here is 
the Iranian nuke deal, which was put together and orchestrated by Barack Obama, was useless. It didn't deter the Iranians from working on nuclear power uh, and progression of nuclear weapons. Folks, they're turning those centrifuges as we speak. And we all knew they were. this was only going to delay them from having nuclear weapons for 10 years. And I was talking to Rabbi Yehuda Glick about this yesterday. And you'll see the interview with Glick. Glick's like saying, it's, you know, 10 years, are you serious? Why do you even want to delay it at all? Why would you want to allow it at all? 10 years is nothing. 10 years goes by just like that. You don't ever want these people, the Iranian regime of the Ayatollah Allah Khomeini. You never want these guys to have nuclear power. Nobody. I mean, it's insane. What was Obama smoking or token? Was he joking? No. And so um, I'm, I'm just trying to, let me, can I calm down? Can I, should I calm down? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can almost go into that song. He's a joker. He's a smoker. He's a midnight toker. I don't know. Selling our nation out in the sun. I mean, that's basically what was going on with this Iranian nuke deal. And it wasn't just Obama. Guys, the British, the French, the Russians. Uh, you all right over there? <laughs> uh, I mean, there were six nations here, guys. Six nations. So, yeah, it is time for some coffee. You're right. But I've drank that. Matter of fact, I got a little Turkish coffee right here that... Uh, yeah, but it was the Armenian guy that gave it to me, but I think it's Turkish coffee. You think it's Armenian? Yeah. I got my lesson in Armenian You're right. coffee. It's Armenian. Time. It's Armenian coffee. It is. It's Ar and they're wonderful. Wonderful Armenian Christians have a wonderful uh, souvenir shop and, and, and stuff. Um, and uh, if you come with me to Israel in October, you can still get signed up. We still got seats available. You can still go on a trip of a lifetime. Come with me to Israel. It's going to be October the 8th through the 18th. What you should do is get a hold of Noseworthy Travel right now. Just go to my website. There's a 1-800 number. You call the number and you tell them, I want to go with Paul Begley to Israel in October and get signed up. I'm serious. I really think uh, you'll be, I know, I don't think you'll be blessed. I know you'll be blessed, okay? I know you will. All right. Anyway, there's Robo Mom. Good morning, Robo Mom. I know it's early in California, but what? Um, yeah, I'm going to come to America. I'm coming home tomorrow. That's right. I'm coming home tomorrow. All right. Coming home tomorrow. I'll be home tomorrow. Lord willing, everything work out good. I'll be home tomorrow. All right. And uh, once I get home, I promise you, I'll do a video. I'll go down in my Salvation Station studio. I'll turn on the camera and say, I'm back. I, I promise I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. All right. Well, you want to go to heaven with Jesus in June? Well, it's possible. It's always possible, born for redemption. It's possible. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour, uh, you know. But we can see the day approaching. Robo Mom says, I was asleep. I'm sorry, Robo Mom. I decided I wanted to go on the air early. I've got a meeting I have to be at. And so I, I had to break in and go, go live early tonight. And so, um, so we did. Okay. But let's go back to Hawaii one more time. Again, we're working on trying to get Code Searcher as our guest on Monday night. We're actually setting up several guests next week. Uh, and we'll get you up to speed on all of that as those come together. Um, but back to Hawaii, folks. The largest freshwater lake on the Big Island has just disappeared. Let me repeat that again. Apocalyptic event. The largest freshwater lake that was 200 feet deep in some places. Gone! Where'd it go? Hot lava. Just covered it completely evaporated it. The heat was so hot, the water, the steam was coming off as it was evaporating, and the lava just took over the whole lake. The lake is gone. It's gone. This was a very, very popular swimming uh, a place where people would come and swim in the beautiful paradise. You're right. It's paradise lost. In, in this case, this was the largest lake in the on the big island. It was crystal clear. It was beautiful. People would go there and swim and boating and all that going on. Everybody loved it. Gone. Gone. The lava completely consumed it. 
We're talking about a lake that was 200 foot deep. You, do you understand the um, the uh, people, the wildlife people there, and the nature preserve people there, and and the uh, all of the folks uh, in the forestry department, everybody in Hawaii, the U.S. Geological Survey, the volcanologists, the seismologists, the meteorologists. All of them, uh, they're saying the climatologist, everybody over there, the, I mean all of them, ophthalmologist, uh, 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 cosmetologist, the urologist, the pathologist, I mean everybody there stunned because the lake is gone. Uh, uh, it's just gone. It turned into a lake of fire. It did. Hot lava. It's it. The water's gone. The water has turned into a lake of fire. Gone. It's shocking. It is shocking what has just happened. Shocking. And if you don't think that we're living in the last days, I mean, this is it, folks. This is it. This is the end times. This is it. And uh, somebody said, oh, no, there's 666 people watching right now. I'm talking about the end of time. Preacher men said it's the end of time. Yes, it is. So I'm just saying, okay, and the Mississippi River's running dry, and the largest lake in Hawaii just turned into a lake of fire. It went from the largest freshwater lake 200 feet deep, Heidi, to a lava lake of fire. No, I'm not going to break into Johnny Cash right now. I know. I, I just saw that. We're going down to a burning lake of fire. No, I'm not going to do it. Burn, burn, burn. And the flames are getting higher. And I'll burn. No, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Okay, not going to do it. Pray for the people of Hawaii. And we're going to have Code Searcher on Monday night. It is a very serious situation. Uh, and it's not over. It's not a joking matter. I'm just kind of joking around. But, I mean, I'm trying to take the edge off. It, it, it really isn't. It's a terrible. Our hearts and prayers have been with the people of Hawaii forever. We're going to keep praying for them. We love every one of them. Code Searcher is going to be with us on Monday night. We are going to continue. Look, I'm on television every Sunday night on in Honolulu uh, with a, at 9 p.m. local time there in Honolulu. I'm on Prophecy. Uh, the Coming Apocalypse show is on every Sunday evening. <clears throat> on Christian television in Honolulu, Hawaii. And Heidi's uncle lives in Honolulu. I mean, not Honolulu, but he lives uh, in Hawaii. In the North Shore. In the North Shore. And, uh, look, but the Big Island is where the big problem is. That's all there is to it. The Big Island is where the big problem is, and we really got to pray because it's a serious situation. A lot of folks have lost their homes and hundreds of homes. matter of fact, Code Searcher is upset because the media is really not not reporting this correctly, uh, it is really, really bad. No, it's not a Trump curse, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's not at all. I mean, Obama came from Hawaii. So you really can't throw this one at Trump. But you are, I don't call this even anybody's fault here. This is really just, this is what the Bible said is going to happen in the last days. The last days, there's going to be Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The moon shall be darkened and the, the sun shall be darkened and the moon will turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Uh, uh, so. You know, I was really challenged today uh, when uh, some of our speakers were talking about when they read in the word and the word said the Lord said he was doing this. Yes. The Lord does say in a lot of places, it says the Lord is doing it. And you're right. Avi Lipkin brought up a couple different places in the Bible. And so did Samanto. And, so did and um, so, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, it's this person's fault or that person's fault. Reality is the Lord said he's going to do it. Some of these things are simply just the judgment of God, the end of time, mankind's sin. It just, it's the way it is. By the way, guys, Guatemala... Um, um, Guatemala, the, the death toll is about right at about a hundred. Uh, uh, okay, now somebody's yelling at me using uh, Bill Clayton. Bill Clayton, I mean, seriously. I don't know, some guy using foul language. Can you guys block him and just get him off my channel? 
Just get him off my channel. He, he can sit and watch it. He just doesn't need to make comments. Now, everybody can watch my show. But it's not everybody should be allowed to make a comment uh, because some folks are 14 years old or they act like they're 14 years old and they use language like they're 14 years old. Adolescent boy instead of a grown man. This guy shows his picture. looks like he's 44, but he acts like he's four. Anyway, I got too much to do. Look. I got too much to do, too many people to get saved. I ain't got time to fool with that stuff. What we got to do is get people right with God. And let me just say, I've got to go. If you're watching right now and you're not saved, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you right now. I'm coming home tomorrow. I want to pray with you right now. If tomorrow comes, that's if if we're still here tomorrow. That's how close we are. God bless you, Robo Mom. I saw that. I love you. People attacking you. There's no need for that. Let me pray right now. There's people here that need to be saved. People need to be saved. And if you're watching and you're saying, Pastor, I am, I'm worried. I can see these are the end time signs. I need to get right. Pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. And I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life, to come into my soul, to cleanse me and to wash me in his precious blood. I know I'm a sinner, Lord, because we've all sinned, Lord. We've all come short of your glory. But I want to get my life right with you. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm, I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to come into my life, to come into my soul, and to set me free, to save me. Because I believe, I believe, I believe, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Christ rose from the dead. I believe that he ascended to heaven, Yeshua, the son of the living God. And I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout amen. I praise the Lord. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. There's Tim nicely standing up for Jesus. God bless you, Tim. We love you and your wife and family. Oh, there's Sylvia. She'll keep praying. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. You're my brother and sister in Christ. Some of you have just given your life to Jesus Christ watching live. Some of you have just prayed, maybe from the archives, as thousands of people will be watching this broadcast on the archives in the next 24 hours. So praise the Lord. Oh yeah, I'm sure I hit a couple nerves. Thank you so much. I love it. I step on the devil's neck all the time. The Lord gave me power to tread over serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us. Nevertheless, I'm not going to rejoice because I got this anointing over the demons of hell, but I'm rejoicing because my name is written down in glory. Can you say amen? Keep praying for the people of, Alaska, of, of Hawaii, please, and the people of Guatemala. Please pray for the people of Hawaii and Guatemala because they certainly need our prayers. We are living, folks, in the last days. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He's coming soon. God bless all of you. We love you guys. I'll be back later with more from Jerusalem, and I'm coming home tomorrow. I'll see you then. God bless. Are you serious? Thank you guys for showing up here. Unscheduled time. Great crowd. Thank you. God bless.